Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today Wes is going to tell us all about his hognose snake. All right, Wes, so tell us about this hognose snake. First of all, what kind of hognose snake is it? This is a western hognose snake found in the southwestern parts of the United States and northern Mexico. It is a terrestrial burrowing snake. Uh, this particular morph is called a condomorph. As you can tell, it looks a lot like an anaconda. And tell us why hognose snakes are called hognose snakes. So hognose snakes are called that because of their noses. They, they've got these cute little upturned noses uh, that they use for burrowing. And in the wild, what do hognoses tend to eat? In the wild, hognoses tend to eat uh, small rodents, some lizards, uh, most stuff they can get their hands on, metaphorical hands. <laughs> and I've heard that uh, hognose snakes eat a fair amount of amphibians too. Yes, that's true. And. Uh, I believe it's the eastern hognose snakes that are very hard to get to eat anything else. They mostly want to eat toads. Exactly. But western hognose snakes are a little less picky. Yes, western hognose snakes are more pet friendly. They're very calm and docile. And the worst they can do is just sort of nibble on you a little. And uh, they are technically mildly venomous, is that right? Technically. Their saliva is a bit reactive to people. Mm -hmm. They are rear fanged, so they've never actually able to actually bite onto you. It would be pretty hard for them to get a get a grip that would actually do any damage. Right. And uh, I've heard they have very elaborate uh, defensive displays. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, they do. They can puff themselves up much like a cobra they can play dead and oftentimes when they play dead they will musk and emit an odor that smells quite foul and rotten to pretend that to you know complete the illusion that they are in fact dead and very distasteful exactly <laughs> yeah. but um, in captivity they don't really do all of those things? Not there. often, no. Have you ever had this uh, snake kind of puff up the neck area or hiss I, or anything? I have had him puff up sometimes when I'm trying to feed him and he doesn't want to eat just then. He'll do some puffing up and do something called bluff striking, which is where he will pretend to strike at an object to try and scare it away. But he's not actually trying to do it any damage. Right. It's just trying to scare it away. Cool. Well, let's take a look at uh, your hognose snake's housing. All right. So let's take a look at this enclosure that you've created for him. Tell us a little bit about this. This is a really useful box. It's a brand of boxes that a lot of reptile enthusiasts like to use because they're cheap, easy to modify, and they're fun to use, in my opinion. They're really good quality. And I'll put a link to that in the description to this brand of box that you have here. Okay, so what have you done to modify it? So I have cut out a section of the top. I have placed some window screen here and zip tied it in to make ventilation mesh. Down here, I cut out a section and I placed a sheet of acrylic for a viewing window because I like to see what's going on in there. Yeah, I like that. It's uh, much easier to see from the side than if you just use the translucent side of the box. Right. And it comes with its own handles and locks, so you don't have to worry about an escaping animal. And with snakes, that's really important. Right. And then for heating? For heating, I use a CHE, ceramic heat emitter, uh, to to create a heat gradient and to create basking spots. I noticed down here, you can kind of see it in the shot, 
But right in the middle of this shot, you have the thermostat probe. Right, to help keep it at a steady temperature of 90 degrees. So that's his hot spot there, 90 degrees. And then the rest of it goes closer to ambient temperature, I would imagine. Right. Okay, you've got some nice hides in there, half log here. The holy log here <laughs> and some rocks praise be the log <laughs> lots of plants and a nice water dish there it looks like you're using aspen shavings yep as the bedding it's white it's cheap and it holds the burrow quite well right and you don't have to worry about the uh the uh, aromatic resins that can be damaging to the lungs and respiratory systems of a lot of animals right aspen's really good for that Plus it smells not bad. Right. And it's really absorbent too. Right. And that's what I use for our snake as well. Basically, I give the snake a lot of cover, a lot of places to climb on, rough spots for shedding, uh, places to hide, places to burrow, places to climb. He's yep. an explorer at heart. He just doesn't want to show it. <laughs> so I'm curious why you chose a ceramic heat emitter rather than an undertaker heater like a flex what tape or something like that so the snakes in the wild the hognose snakes they burrow to get cooler that means they go down when they want to get warm they go up towards the surface an under tank heater would keep the bottom warm and it would confuse them ah much like uh, with many invertebrates right so the reason I've chosen this size of box is so that he will have a large enough home when he gets big enough and I don't have to upgrade the size at all. Hmm. Anyway. He'll, oh, go, go ahead. He will get about two feet long. He's a male, which means he'll be smaller than females get. And this will be a nice spacious enclosure for him since technically a male is often kept in a 10 gallon aquarium. This has a footprint that's quite a bit larger than that. Right. So he'll be just fine. See how fast he goes. Yeah. He is quite a bit faster on the rough surface there, isn't he? Right. He's a really pretty one. Definitely. Can we get a look at his black belly? Sure. Now that is one of the characteristics of the condomorph, isn't it? Yes. The black belly and the white side. That's quite a cool contrast. I know he probably doesn't... He's going to be a little bit shy about it, but that is just beautiful. I love the... The, and there's kind of the yellowish scales interspersed on the black belly scales. That looks mm -hmm. really cool. It's totally beautiful. Quite an amazing little snake there. And since he's a juvenile, he still has the yellow tip of the tail that characterizes juvenile hog noses. Hmm. He'll lose it when he gets older. Is there a particular reason that's known for the yellow tail? Not that I'm aware of. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if it has something to do with the posematic coloration. It might. Just a possible idea. I don't know. All right, well, tell us how a typical week of care goes for your hognose snake. So a typical week of caring for my hognose snake, about once a week, usually on Saturdays, I will feed him a, a frozen and then thawed pinky mouse. And for the rest of the week, I just watch him, or sometimes I occasionally hold him. He's really not very high maintenance. So, um, how much did, if you don't mind my asking, how much he did it cost? He was about $250. Okay, because he's a condom morph, right? Right, he was a bit pricier. I could have gotten him for cheaper if I would looked hard, but I really wanted one. Mm -hmm. So, I got him at a pet store. Down in I love how the hognose snake feels. It's very different from handling our corn snake. For one... It's not a constrictor, so the way that he grips is very different. Right. But also, he weighs not very much, <laughs> so it feels totally different from handling a corn snake. And our corn snake is not full-grown yet, but he weighs 200 grams, so he's a lot That's bigger a than lot this of guy. Grams. Yeah, about 215 grams, somewhere around there now. So he's growing. Got a lot of growing to do yet, but so does this guy. But how many grams do you think this one weighs? Oh, I weighed him the other day, but I can't remember how much. Would you like to weigh him? Maybe we could weigh him, yeah, that'd be fun. 16 to 18 grams? Right around 16 grams. He's actually due for a shed sometime in the next month or so. How often has he been shedding at this age? 
I've only managed to catch him shedding once. Oh, okay. And how long have you had him? I have had him since about last April. Oh, okay. April of 2019. So about five months or so? About. All right. Well, do you think he will uh, be interested in feeding? Let's find out. Well, let's see if this little snake wants to have dinner. So you usually set it on a paper towel like that? Yep, so that he doesn't accidentally eat anything. That's a good idea. Make sure he doesn't swallow some husband shavings or something. Oh, he seems immediately interested, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, there we go. There he goes. Does he usually grab it side on like that? He grabs it wherever. Wow. He's taking it to wherever he wants. Gonna... <laughs> What's he doing with it? I've never seen him do that. Guess he's gonna hide it somewhere. Unlike other snakes, he doesn't tend to grab by the front or the back. Mm -hmm. He'll grab it wherever. Wow. And he'll twist it around until he can get it down. It's different behavior than other snakes show. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the other snakes go very preferentially for an end, especially the head, huh? Mm. Oh, there we go. Just ran off with it. <laughs> He's almost got the head now. When he gets it down, it goes down fast. But until then, it takes him a little bit. Oh, there we go. That'd be my brother and Kendra. Oh, okay. You can get that in just a second here. Finishes up the leg. He squeezes it down with his rubber lips. Yeah. There he goes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching today and thank you Wes for joining us. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to like, rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe, and then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.